Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. And uh, this is the lecture 8.2, how to connect Flask application with Fast API ap application. Um, so yeah, what we are going to do guys is just to copy and paste many stuff, but before let's make some shorter view from the complex example of uh, fast API application that we did on the last week. And if you remember guys, I have uploaded this example and some of you maybe run it already and know how it works here. So in short, uh, you have these five pi, uh, files and each of these does a certain thing here. Yeah? So we have started from the database.py, uh, which I have provided some uh, comments here. So generally it is the same stuff that we have done before about SQL Hemi. So what we have defined here is the local database, yeah, which is the SQLite here. Yeah, and I have provided some links that you can use your uh, MySQL or uh, PostgreSQL. So we have created engine, which will be um, connection between our server and database yeah so so this is the sql server and we have our own web server so this will be kind of bound to each other yeah so we have so local session yeah so this will be doing the uh uh how to say it within the same connection yeah so all the all the uh, requests will be the same within the same connection so we are not going to uh use different connections here yeah? so this will be connected and when the request is over this will be closed okay so and base is the uh to create models and, and define the tables here yeah? so our code will be uh transferred to sql uh statements so next stuff was the models so it is the same yeah so i've just copied from from lecture seven uh, where I have users table and cars table, yeah. So nothing new here, guys. It's just a copy paste. So yeah, I'm just extending the base from the database.py. And what next is the actually uh, crude crude.py. And here we can get user by login, get user by first name. So what we are doing is just getting the uh, DB, yeah. So DB is coming from the session. Uh, this one and uh, what we are going uh, to look for yeah so get user by login will return us only first uh, and only response so this will be a list of elements sorry this will be one uh, object yeah so this is going to be one object and this is going to be user object and yeah because our login is unique so we can search for uh, users by their first name so we will get uh, many results because uh, we have uh, we, we can have many uh, same names in the table yeah so names are not unique so we can get all the users we can get the car by its id we can get all the user cars yeah so they're related to only one user not all cars but the cars that uh, bound to some person and we can get all the cars yeah so you can see that we we filter it by the car owner here and but here we're just getting all the elements so what we have here about like this skip and limit guys we can skip first n results and limit to n results so for example if i pass five here so we are starting from the fifth result and limit can be 10 yeah limit can be 10 and we're getting and the elements from fifths to fifteenths so this is how it works, yeah? And we have two creating um, uh, functions, yeah? First one is the create user, the second one is create car. And you can see that here we are using these schemas, guys, and these schemas is actually will be coming from the schemas.py. And this is the pydantic models. Pydantic models are um, nice because they are coming as dictionary, yeah? So th this can be recognized as dictionary. So when we create a new user, we are just uh, getting the new user, yeah, which is coming from the uh, 
data coming from the schemas user create and we have login we have first name second name password so usual stuff yeah we do add a new user we commit this to our database and we refresh that this user is uh, coming uh, appearing in our database the same goes for the create car and as you can see i'm using this uh, different way to create a model so uh, i can get this uh, dictionary from the schemas and pass this to a uh, car so you can see this this is the same guys like i'm passing the car vendor car model car owner and car owner is defined here this way because i'm passing user id here too okay so schemas look like this way so we have pydantic yeah so pydantic enforces type hints at runtime and provides user friendly errors when data is invalid define how data should be in pure canonical python and so on so uh generally we can say that pydantic are models that help you to provide a uh, dictionary yeah so this this will be maybe um less accurate but this will be easier to understand so we will have some car base yeah so this is the base model for our schema which is uh, inheriting from this base model and at least we need to define these uh, two uh, fields in our table this is the car vendor and car model so we also have car create which is in, uh, inheriting from car base and this uh, this class inherits these two uh, fields so we don't need other yeah and finally we have car uh, model uh, which has the car id and car owner yeah the car id is integer and car owner is also integer so everything is working and here in uh, meta class config we can say that we are going to use or am yeah so this is we are just literally saying that we are going to use some uh, object relational mapping uh, library which is going to be SQL Alchemy guys that we have defined it here in models and yeah we have the same stuff for the user we have basic uh, fields that should be defined it's like login username and user second name we have user create and we have uh, the user yeah so th this is what we are going to return as you can see in user create we have password yeah, which is the uh, not uh, not presented in user class because when we retrieve data through our API, this is what we are going to trigger, guys. User ID, user cards, and because we are extending this from user base, we also have uh, login, user first name, and second name. Okay, and yeah, we are going to use ORM mod true. So we have a list of cards here, yeah, which is defined here by user cards relationship and yeah finally we do some main in main we create uh, uh, metadata create also this is saying that we are creating the uh, tables yeah if these tables exist we are just skipping this uh, creation part so all we do is just connect to the uh, database yeah so we also define this helper function like get db so uh, this will help us to send requests within the same uh, connection yeah and once the request is completed so we have retrieved all the data that we wanted db is going to be closed okay and <clears throat> We create fast IP, FAPP, yeah. So this is the fast IP application or object, and yeah. So all we need to do is just to define the uh, functions and their decorators, yeah. So by decorators we will use post, get, delete, or update methods, yeah. I've just used post, get, and uh, yeah. I didn't use update and I, I didn't use delete, but I think this will be easier if uh, this this is easier so you can uh, accomplish this task by yourself so the first one is the create user guys we are receiving the some uh, post request yeah we are receiving some post request to our server which will be the UV current server and when this re request comes to this 
function yeah so we know that this this create user will be triggered because of the post request response model is going to be schemas user so schemas user so this is what we will return to uh, as, as a response yeah this one and this one so yeah so we just create and our crude will be triggered where our create user will be triggered and yeah what we are doing here guys if we have user uh, if we are trying to create a user that already exists yeah so the login should be unique then we will just say that http exception uh, 400 status code login is already taken by another user or uh, this uh, login is empty yeah? or oh, sorry this login is busy uh, if we don't have uh, any user so this returns us nothing yeah this will be none then we are going to create a user so which will be easier so we, we, we just pass db connection and we pass the user which is coming here yeah so yeah this one and yeah the, the logic is the same so difference between post and get post is receiving something create something or do changes and return some response yeah and both get get methods just return your result from the db and here we have get users we are returning all the users and you can see that response model is going to be list of uh, user pydantic model okay and we just uh, trigger the get all user from the crude uh, package yeah so get all users here so we are returning all the users from the database and the, the rest is logical kind of guys and what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to combine the flask application and flask Flask application with the fast API complex example. What I'm gonna do is, guys, I'm gonna copy the lecture solving code here, yeah, which was the last one here. Sorry, I'm going to copy it this way. And in lecture eight, I'm going to create a new folder saying project uh, fast API and Flask and SQL Alchemy. So this is going to be created. I'm going to create a new folder here called web, yeah, which will be our uh, fast application. Yeah, this is going to be our fast application. And what else I'm gonna do is copy uh, this example to fast API complex example. So I'm passing it here, yep. So we have all this stuff here. What I'm gonna do is add next lines of code, guys. So I'm gonna say that I'm going to import from web uh, Flask app. Yeah, from the Flask app. And let's see, did, where were my Flask applications created? Here, yeah, it is. it is created here. And what I'm gonna do is import app yeah, as Flask application, yeah? So my application from Flask app will be recognized as Flask app. And also I need to import uh, this stuff so I can merge to uh, projects into one so from uh, fast IP api dot uh, esgi not fast api what was it wsgi okay what was it let me remember middleware yeah Middleware VSGI import VSGI middleware. So I'm gonna import this uh, VSGI uh, middleware class here, yeah, which will be web server gateway interface middleware. So this is not uh, this is something between user and your server actually. 
okay so from from your between something uh front end and back end and what i'm gonna do guys is i'm gonna say that fast api dot uh, mount and i'm gonna say that this is going to be slash and i'm gonna say that you can see that api is asgi api which is the our flask application and yep what was it was it this way i think i'm missing something but just a second guys let me remember Hmm. I need to use VSGI middleware. I think I need to. So, um, ah, sorry, I need to do it this way. Is J middleware and my application here. So, what I'm actually doing, guys, I'm seeing that I am wrapping my Plus application into my fast api application so this slash means that um, the request yeah the request that coming to uh, 100 slash will return us the result of uh, flask p oh sorry flask uh, application yeah so let me just run it so you can see it mm -hmm. Uh, yep. I oh, know it's not going to start because I'm not in the folder. So project. So um, I did a uh, wrong import, guys. So it should be Flask, not Flask app, but the main. So I'm going to import from main app. Yeah. So let me run it again. So yeah, it will say that I have a problem here. So because I am doing a little different here. Yeah. So in main, I need to say that this is the relative import. So yep, from database models, from database models, show. Okay, flask up import in models.py in models.py I need to do it this way flask up which is the web.flask up in crude in main in main.py we have another problem here good from database which is the web dot database okay so now it should work yep nice so you can see that we have mounted the application here sorry this is our web so in main we have uh we did we, we did a little changes guys we just added the middleware psgi uh, middleware class so we can uh, insert in middleware our flask application so our main server uvicorn is running both of them so yeah this is really nice so from the web dot main from which is the our web application which is the flask from its main we are uploading our uh, importing our application flask application and what we did is just mount it uh, 
is running our Flask application here. Yep. So that's it, guys. So this is how you just import the uh, Fast API 